If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. If you want news or rumors that up Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, The Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. I'm so happy to have everyone back here talking about Nynaeve, but we haven't gotten there just yet. We'll get there sh shortly. I want to remind everybody what's happening this upcoming Watt Wednesday. We're back with another game night here at the Dusty Wheel. Can't wait to bring new guests in. That's right, James Liang, or Jimmy, as some of you know him from JordanCon. My good friend is going to be here. Also, DT, I'm sure you know him well from Discord and gaming. And then we're going to have two previous guests back with us, Lee Butler and Colin from the Ranland TV pod is also going to be there. That's going to be a blast. I can't wait to do game night with everybody this Watt Wednesday. And then we might have something a little bit special for Sunday. I'm still working on it. But until then, let's get on with the show. So you're here to talk all about Zoe Robbins and Nynaeve. So before I introduce my guests, let's set the stage uh, by learning a little bit more about Zoe. Born in Wellington, New Zealand, actress Zoe Robbins' first known acting credit was as a lead in 2005 as Fagar in the New Zealand TV show The New Tomorrow, a sequel to the cult television series The Tribe where the kids of the world have been left to take care of themselves after a deadly virus has killed all the adults. She followed this up with another lead series regular role as Haley in the 2006-2007 The Killian Curse, also a New Zealand TV show, but this time a youth horror fantasy about a curse placed on a school by Killian, the founder who wants revenge on those who caused his death. It's clear she loved these experiences because she continued to hone her craft in theater throughout high school and the Long Cloud Youth Theater, leading to graduating from the Actors Program in 2014. After all that, Zoe was destined for roles well beyond New Zealand TV. In 2015, she landed a role as Zora, an elf hunter, in Netflix The Shannara Chronicles, an adaptation of a well-loved American fantasy series. Continuing her rising profile, she played the role of Haley for two seasons as the white Power Ranger in Power Rangers Ninja Steel. Then Zoe landed a film role as Ona in a 2019 American slasher film, Black Christmas, that follows a group of sorority sisters at Hawthorne College as they're preyed upon by a stalker. Now all this work through TV, theater, and film over the last decade and a half led to Zoe landing what I think would be the biggest role of her career in the upcoming The Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime TV series as Nynaeve Almira. So with that introduction, let's discuss becoming Nynaeve. And to do that with me are my two wonderful guests today. Let me introduce YouTubers themselves, Rhythma and Call Me Nakomi. How are you both doing this afternoon? Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm great. Great, Fantastic. Matt. Thanks, for being, thanks, thanks yeah. for being, having me back. As, as I like to say, uh, cheers from us here at the Dusty Wheel. Cheers. Cheers. I, love have, that, love... I don't have a mug. I know. Soon, soon. Soon you will have a mug, I promise. <laughs> thank you again. Absolutely. I'm, I'm grateful to have you both here. And thank you very much for you know jumping in and wanting to discuss uh, Zoe Robbins. This is going to be a lot of fun tonight. I actually really enjoyed going through her works. Uh, that's, that's the fun part about a show like this is just sitting down and, and actually watching what they've done before as part mm -hmm. of really wanting to kind of be able to discuss it with fans. So uh, what I wanted to do before, though, we jumped into all the work that Zoe Robbins has done. I want to ask you both, and maybe Rhythm, I'll start with you. You know, have you been following her at all? Have you kind of seen her outside of her acting roles? Is there anything that kind of stands out to you, just your perception of Zoe Robbins? 
Yeah, I think she used to have an Instagram, and I used to follow her, but um, her Instagram disappeared, um, unfortunately. But I mean, she doesn't have much of a social media presence, so it's hard to like get to know her as an actress. Um, there was a video of her doing like a vlog style with her Power Rangers cast members. Yeah, and that, yeah, that was, was really good. cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I felt a little weird like stalking her, but she just seems like a nice you know, like a normal person outside of her career. And I hope she brings back her Instagram because I really enjoy like Madeline Madden. Yeah. Her mm -hmm. Instagram mm -hmm. is so much fun. And I mean, Barney Harris, when he had his Instagram, it was so much fun. So hopefully there was no hotter ticket in town. Down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah no, a note to Zoe. Yeah, a note to Zoe. Uh, we'd love to have you back on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, that, that was that water challenge video, I think, that she did with her co star. Uh, you know, I, I saw that one. And also, she did a, an interview with, a, I think it was. It was a news organization back in New Zealand, I think, and talking about <laughs> yeah. going back and taking a break, obviously, because of the pandemic and just being happy to be back with family and her and her son, it sounded like. So, mm -hmm. yeah, anything that stuck out to you, Nakomi? Uh, you know, anything you followed about her before we jump into her works that you wanted to bring up? Um, well, I, you know, I looked at everybody's IMDb. I'm an IMDb junkie, um, but um, <laughs> I actually, well, I, I just basically looked up her, um, her, IMDb and actually saw a date of birth there. And sometimes a lot of actors don't have their date of birth there. So I decided to, you know, immediately my brain immediately goes, oh, she's a, she's an Aquarius. No, she's a Pisces. And so, um, you know, I love it. You know, and so basically I just started looking up her, her, her chart. I just basically did her chart. So she's a Pisces sun. She's an Aquarius Pisces cusp, but she's a Pisces sun sign, a moon Aquarius, Aquarius sign. Um, Cancer is in her Mars and Venus is in her Aries. And so I, I, just just a, a little extra little, um, you know, deep dive it. into it a little bit. But I find it interesting that she has she comes from Nigerian descent also. Um, uh, mm. My wife is Nigerian. So basically, you know, that, that just caught my attention <clears throat> real quick. Um, but I, I was just like, she seems like a very, you know, even keeled kind of personality. So it gave me, it gave me um, a lot of hope for what I was looking into. Yeah, that's awesome. What a, what a great note. I, <laughs> that was an awesome deep dive into her, her signs. Uh, I love that. That's so cool. Uh, so uh, that, that I think is a great start. Kind of bringing up the fact that she's even keel. Yeah, I kind of took that. She just kind of seems like, I mean, of course, like you would, she comes across like a very kind of normal person, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and loves to be with her family and, and loves what she's doing. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's jump into this first. I, I kind of want to take a look at her career. The reason why we've done some of these, if you haven't, if you're here for the first time, you're kind of wondering why are we talking about this? Uh, we did one for Madeline Madden with, as Egwene and one for uh, Josha Strauski as Rand. Part of this and the emphasis is for us to kind of take a look at what we think they'll bring to this role outside of what they look like. Uh, there was kind of a severe focus of what the what the cast looked like when they were first cast. But uh, this was a lot of fun for me because I want to have a good idea of what they might bring to the role from what they've already kind of brought to roles that they've they've taken on. So let's jump into that. And let's start with her earliest. And I actually really enjoyed this. For those of you that are watching, you can find a link to all of uh, what we watched in the description of this video itself. And the first ones were The New Tomorrow and The Killian Curse. And I, I, let's focus on The Killian Curse here. Uh, Rhythma, was there something that stuck out to you as a young actress that uh, Zoe Robbins brought to that role in The Killian Curse? Yeah, so... I guess if you haven't seen it, because it's a very like niche, obscure piece of media, if you're like American like me, um, it's just about this like weird school where there used to be demons or something. Yeah. Um, and I guess what stood out to me is that she was an actress at all at that age. So that's what I really took away from that role was the fact that she's been acting for a long time and like she's not even though she might not be super well known she has a lot of experience so that was really the main thing that i took away from it and also that she's just really cute like i think she's like probably <laughs> 10 or 12 so she's really cute to watch her and yeah that's that was my main takeaway from watching a little episode of that yeah she her age and i, I thought she did a fantastic job with that what i mean by that is uh I don't know. When I think about young roles and you know films and fantasy, uh, I think about Harry Potter, 
And mm-hmm. some of those, I know some of the actors, their first, that first movie was a little awkward. Like they were still trying to get yeah. into what they were doing and really kind of sell it. Uh, I thought she owned, there's a scene. I, you should all go back and watch mm-hmm. this. I'm serious. Go watch episode six. It's probably maybe 20 minutes in, I think. There's a scene where she's trying to collect blood. There's a, like a blood drive or something. And she's collecting blood for the blood drive. And then she ends up by herself. She walks onto this bus. It's attacked by vampires. Like, and I, I don't know, it was just, it was really believable. Like I, I settled into watching it and I was like, okay, she, she pulled this off. Like mm-hmm. this kid going onto a bus and being attacked by vampires. I, I, I loved it. So the fact that she could kind of own that scene at that age, I, mm-hmm. yeah, that was, that was really impressive. Um, also, so yeah, I, I mean, yeah, go for it. Just adding on to that. This was like 2006. So yeah. like mm-hmm. she would have been acting with nothing, like just a green screen, not even a green screen, just like air. So that's really impressive that she sold it just like acting by herself, you know? Yeah. Right. It was, right. Yeah. That, yeah. It was, it's a, it's a fun one. Like I said, uh, you should go, uh, you can, I think that one's actually on YouTube. Anyone can go watch that one. They're fun. They're, again, it was, she's a kid and, and having a lot of fun with what she was doing. I guess that's what I took from it is it seemed like she did have a lot of fun. And as I mentioned, as the, as we intro this, from a career standpoint, I couldn't find any of those works, but she did some theater work. If anyone has those videos, I'd love to see them. <laughs> if you have a video of her in, as a kid doing some theater work in high school, that's awesome. Uh, but it seems like she definitely caught the bug and loved what she was doing and kept working on it. So, uh, you know, and, and she did a lot of uh, TV roles in New Zealand, but the one of the ones that kind of first comes up here, and I want to ask you, Nakomi, what you thought about this, she got cast in the Shannara Chronicles. Mm-hmm. And I and I don't want this to turn into a how much do we dislike the Shannara Chronicles kind of thing. I get it. A lot of people didn't like it. But I, I wanted to ask you about her character. Is there something you, you, you caught watching her as Zora that you think stood out from an acting standpoint? Um, I, it, it stood out. Well, the first thing that stood out basically was her comfort level with um, just being a little bit more... Um, aggressive basically mm. you know because what she was playing was a elf hunter yep. so um she and she was actually the leader of the camp so she had to it stood out to me basically that she kind of had to command you know attention basically as far as being and i think she was the only female in that camp so um you know I, i'm not exactly sure if i noticed everyone in there but at least the I guess major ro- ro- roles of the other hunters w- but were basically men um, besides her. And she basically seemed like she was in charge and telling women what to do. So that stood out to me basically that at least um, she has had experience basically, you know, having to, you know, um, be in the middle and command and be, you know, so that kind of stood out to me as far as um, a connection. Um, and so she was also, so she was believable then to you as a leader like you you yeah. felt like that she pulled that off yeah i think it was believable enough she was the nastiest of them all of, of them all <laughs> gotcha. um, you know but you know and and also she had a you know a personal relationship with the person that she was hunting or one of the individuals she was hunting okay. so um and you know there was a little bit of intimacy there too so that basically stood out also but and also i was like okay it shows range and Comfortable, comfortable, comfortability. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it shows her comfort level <laughs> yeah, with basically go. being able to um, do different things. Uh, you know, so she could be challenged. And yeah. she also did the same thing in another in another one of the, the shows that I watched for her, which is um, I think it was the Wellington Carl, um, Brookwood. Brooklyn oh yeah, I want, we'll, yeah. we'll get to broken, but yeah, I want to talk about that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't wait to actually get to that one. But so you, you brought up an interesting thing here oh. was was owning a scene here. Yeah, sorry, you were going to add one more thing there. Yeah, go for one it. One more thing, she actually used weapons, so um, it it, yeah. it it stood out to me that she was agile. So I was like, okay, she's athletic. So I mean, not saying that I said I are you know athletic people, but at the same time, that and maybe a little bit of the you know um, other shows that she's done, she is it's not like she's stiff. So she yeah. could maybe get a little bit more into, you know, the fights. Yeah. 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 That's, that one's good. I, I mean, up to you, Rhythm, uh, this idea of her 
uh, kind of coming into a leadership role here. And, and also there's some athleticism. There's also owning kind of the scene itself. What stuck out, stuck out to you, any of those or anything else that you kind of noticed in this role as Zora? Yeah, I think what Nakomi said about like being a little more aggressive and edgier definitely mm -hmm. stood out to me about this role because just in general, I mean, she's obviously very beautiful, but she has very like soft features. And I mm -hmm. think that Naimee, not getting too much into Naimee right now, but like she is definitely like more of like a, a lot of people think of her as like an angry character. You know, she has a, mm. a little bit of like, she's always got like a little bit of a chip on her shoulder. So I think mm -hmm. it was interesting seeing her in a more like, like Nakomi said, aggressive role where she is kind of taking the lead because obviously in like Killian Curse, she's just a kid. And then uh, when we talk about Power Rangers, you know, she's kind of like more supporting, but yeah, that was really what stuck out to me. And like also the physicality of that role was really good to me. Um, mm -hmm. All of the Two Rivers people who, all of the two, they ha obviously they're not all farmers, but they all have like very physically demanding lives, more so than like, you know, people who live in like Camelin or whatever. And I think Nynaeve especially, like remember in Eye of the World when she's like, when she tracks down Lan yeah. and the rest yeah. of them. So like she definitely has a physicality to her character. And I think even the Aes Sedai channeling is like a very physical thing. And so I think it, it was interesting seeing her in a more like engaged role like that. Yeah. And with the, I mean, it's certainly much different role than anything she had done prior to that moment in her career. And so, yeah, and I think the, phys the physicality is something that we should bring up in the sense that, yeah, like we should, that should be believable, you know, as a, you know, Nynaeve as a tracker should come across, be able to come across on the, on the screen, so. She yeah. should be able to hunt. Her father told her to hunt. So honestly, yeah. exactly. it would be so awesome if I saw her basically just while the, the guys were out there shooting and practicing, if she just showed up with a bow and just basically just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. bullseyes it. Well, awesome. she, died, she has she a bow in that. this show, so that was nice to yeah. see. I, I was definitely mm -hmm. like, that's a good Two Rivers bow right there. Yes. Yeah, as, as soon as I saw the bow, I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and she <laughs> mentioned that to the news, I think it was that, that media uh, interview that she did last year where she did talk about that. Like She was excited about being able to learn how to shoot a bow. And so, yeah, it, oh, it kind of worked out for her, if you will. Um, so, uh, yeah, and this is, uh, yeah, someone did bring this up and this is probably, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this up here. We're not going to be trying to spoil the, the, sh the series all the way to the end or anything like that, but we are going to be talking about Nynaeve later in the show. And so there may be some spoilers. So when we get to that part of the show, I'll throw a spoiler banner up and, and those that are watching can know about that. You might have heard us say, well, she's from the Edmonds Field and you know, all these other things. Uh, like I said, if, if we, if anyone on the panel decides like, oh, I really want to talk about a later arc right now, we can throw a spoiler banner up for people that are watching. But okay. be on the lookout for that if you're trying not to ruin anything about the books uh, for those that are watching us. And if you happen to be here for the first time or you're here and hanging out and, and enjoying this, please like the video. It's how other fans while we're live here can find this and afterwards. We really appreciate that. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, just come subscribe here. We love having other fans watch us live and do live wheel, wheel of time weekly content and make sure you go check out both of the channels of my guests too after the show. So uh, I, I kind of wanted to jump after the Shannara Chronicles. The next big role that I saw at least was uh, Power Rangers, right? And I remember when she first got cast and, and I think somebody said to me like, she was in Power Rangers, you know, and, and immediately there's I don't know, there was kind of like some chuckles from people like, well, it's Power Rangers. Come on, like, what can what can you gain from Power Rangers? Uh, so I, I asked myself that question, like, what could be... <laughs> I wanted to go watch it, and I did watch a couple of episodes that she did. She's in, like, a full two seasons of Power Rangers. So, uh, and maybe let's, let's start with you, Rhythm, on Power Rangers itself. Did you gain anything from watching what you did as far as what you think or what her range is as, a, as an actress or what you think she brought to that role that could transcend? Yeah, so first of all, it was just really nostalgic watching Power Rangers as a 22 <laughs> right. year old. Um, it was a lot of fun and it, it definitely is like very campy and I can understand people being like, well, Power Rangers to Wheel of Time, like it's, I, I can understand like the, the apprehension, but I mean, right the bones are there and I think 
Wheel of Time is like only a step away from like Power Rangers in terms of like, you know, it's like they're both fantasy in in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of like fight scenes in Power Rangers and they're really cheesy, but I think that she really commits to it. And I think that's the biggest thing when you're in a fantasy TV show is like committing to it and like really just like immersing yourself in it and not trying to like, you know, there can't be any like divide between like, it has to be, it has to be believable. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if that makes yeah, any yeah. sense, but yeah, the, when, the committing to it. Yeah. That's a, that's a, yeah. that's a great comment. Like, even she, if she, yeah. Yeah. Oh, even if she's like fighting against like these plastic monsters, she still is like fierce, like giving it her all. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like she's, you know, she's not, she's not holding anything back. So I definitely enjoyed watching the Power Rangers. <laughs> Power Rangers episodes and and when she's not in her like Power Ranger mode she definitely displays a lot of like just just yeah she just comes off as like a believable teenager yeah. and yeah yeah there's something I, I enjoyed it there's something normal about like when she, like you said when she's out of that and she's they're just back talking about something that's happening with the group of them it, I don't know it's, it seems weird to say like she comes across normal <laughs> But I, that's all I can say, which is it doesn't feel her performance doesn't feel campy, even though the overall show mm -hmm. is that way. Yeah, so that's, I didn't, that's a great there, way of putting it. There's something like she's genuinely in the role and she's very expressive. That's one of the things I thought about yeah. both of these last two roles we just talked about. She comes across affected by, you know, the the things that prop, you know, whatever that they've built into her character. Yeah. And and there's something like, yeah, like she seems very approachable and genuine and expressive in both these roles. So, yeah, I, I think commits a great word for it. Like you said, look, it's Power Rangers. So, yeah, yeah it's going to be campy. But uh, from an from an acting standpoint, uh, I enjoyed watching scenes where she engaged more so than some of her co-stars. And, you know, not to be offensive to any of the co-stars out there. I'm just saying I just engaged more with it. Uh, Nakomi, did you oh. was there anything that? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Rhythm. One thing I wanted to say was that she is obviously from New Zealand, but in the show she does a American accent, and I thought her American accent was really good. Like, I think sometimes foreigners can like come in and do accents, and it sounds like really you can tell that they're doing an accent. But I thought her accent was pretty good, and so that makes me interested in the show for Wheel of Time. Like, I wonder what accent she's gonna have. Like, is she gonna do yeah. her? normal kiwi accent or is she going to have like an american accent so that's something i'm weirdly really excited about is like seeing everyone's accent in the show and like what they decide to what they land on i guess yeah but, for sure yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah no, me me yeah, too you know um basically i actually made a note of every accent she used in all of the shows oh, um nice. and i <laughs> saw i kind of saw a difference i'm um, well, actually, you know what? I, going back, I think that I decided that what she was using in um, the first show that I saw was basically it sounded more of a of a New Zealand New Zealand accent. <laughs> so, um, but I was just like, I could I could notice the New Zealand accent and the American accent. That she does have a really good American accent. I wouldn't mind to hear her have a English accent or a New Zealand, not New Zealand accent, an English accent, or even a um, Irish accent, like how um, I'm, I'm, um, that's how I think they said that the Two Rivers accent was supposed to sound like, mm. basically, like from like an Irish accent. But either way, I think she does really well with accents. So that would be that's be that would be really cool. I completely agree with you too, though that she did commit to those roles. And it really took me back to like 12, 15 years old uh, when I was watching Power Rangers back in the day. Um, and, uh, you know, I was just like, how did I watch this stuff? But at the same time, I found myself just basically just watching it anyway. So, but, um, but um, yes, I, 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 I liked seeing her agility and her athleticism uh, also when she was not in costume. Please clarify if you guys know this. I it was a, it was a mystery to me even when I was a kid. Are those <laughs> actors even are those actors the same people who are in the in the um, costumes? Oh, during... I don't know. Yeah, oh, so I'm just like question. I don't know. So I was just mostly watching when she was out of costume, so I could actually see how she moves. Um, mm -hmm. So 
I, I thought that even though, even even then, she still basically moved pretty well. I'm not saying that she needs to be any type of superhero or anything like that, basically. But I think she moved pretty well. And also, um, uh, speaking about the age, I kind of feel that I, I, I do believe she could come off as a she could play a, a, a teenager, but I kind of feel that she does look a little, at least maybe by this time, she does look a little bit more mature. And I mean, she yeah, lived, sure. she's lived out, she has a son, you know? Yeah, and so sure. she is, it's but so far into teenage life, you can revert. I assume, I assume. I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not an actor, nor can I basically assume how far Meryl Streep can revert back into being a teenager. But at the same time, she can't be Meryl Streep in Power Rangers, she has to basically just not not like you know, not saying she didn't give it her all, but at the same time, it's but so far the range that you really need in Power Rangers. Sorry, yeah, Power Rangers. By the, by, by the way, uh, <laughs> Rhythma, uh, they're talking about your mug flex in chat right now. <laughs> Every time you bring the mug up, everyone everyone remarks that. That's a nice ass. Mug. That's sorry. That's a nice mug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah by the way if this is the first time you're with us uh, or you just joined us we're, we're talking about what zoe robbins what she's been up to for the last basically 10 years of her career and most recently we just spoke about uh the shannara chronicles and power rangers uh and i think it's uh, this is a good kind of segue into this next one which is probably one of my favorite other like i don't know why i really like the killian curse and whatever that's like one of my favorites that she did but uh broken wood mysteries uh did both rip did both of you have a chance to catch broken wood mysteries the power of steam i am going back i i i i'm i i need to know how it ends i, I, I <laughs> had a chance to watch the end of it I oh okay okay she she did great in a role in her in her limited role or you know it was she wasn't limited she definitely had several she had oh it was a, yeah, it was a big role. throughout the yeah. whole entire show basically but yeah. at the same time you, she was definitely um she was definitely noticeable she definitely was um was you know um she she It was a it was an alternative um, you know role basically she it was believable um, yeah. the the and so it, it showed um, something happens to a, her partner and so she basically uh, not the in the life of her partner basically and so she shows really really it, it, she could you show you could see the compassion you know what I mean it's yep. she doesn't have a ton of um you know um screen time and but but. For, and she doesn't have a ton of lines, but at the same time, whatever she had, she basically really just, um, she, 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 she used her time very well. Well, if you haven't seen the very end of it, she, cause they, they have a couple of moments. It's a mystery show. Right. And so she's brought in to do to, a lot of, like, she's, got, she's brought in to do a lot of like interviewing in those moments. And mm -hmm. I really, that's where she really sells me. On yes. It. Uh, there's, if you haven't seen this broken wood mysteries, you can find it. Uh, I think it's on acorn TV or something, but you can also find it on Amazon and you can go watch it. It's, I thought it was fantastic. I, it's like a hallmark kind of quality production. I would I say know, as in, I, maybe it's, maybe, I don't want now maybe everyone who did this from broken wood mysteries. That's not to be offensive. I'm saying it's a quality TV show. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the characters are really interesting. Uh, I think it's been going on since 2014. And she came in for this this special. And I thought, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I thought it was a strong performance. Uh, the one thing I, I thought was really great here was from a relationship standpoint, I did buy it. Um, as a, I, I bought the relationship. And, you know, but I, that I thought was important for me to see. And mm -hmm. I was looking for that in kind of all of, I can't really say I bought the relationship as much in Power Rangers, but I I'm not, yeah. <laughs> what I mean by that is it's Power Rangers. It's not meant yeah. to be a, a, it's like not meant to be a relationship show, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in that sense. So I was looking for it here. Uh, Rhythma, what stood out to you? It, was it also this uh, kind of what Nakomi just pointed out or there's other, some other attributes that you thought really shine for her in this one? Um, I actually didn't watch this one, but oh, okay. it's really good to hear you say that she sold the relationship because mm -hmm. obviously not getting too spoilery, but I mean, it also happens in the eye of the world, but yeah. Nineen's relationship with a certain someone is very central to her character <laughs> and definitely it was like one of my favorite parts of the books was really yeah. Nynaeve and her relationship. <laughs> uh, so, so that was, yeah. it's good to hear that. Yeah, and by the way, we're only being a little bit careful now. We're going to jump into Nynaeve here shortly. We'll throw a spoiler banner up, and then we can talk all about Nynaeve. Uh, but yeah, if you, for those of you that are watching, 
I do recommend this one. I think it's, I want to say it's only an hour long. Maybe it's two, but I thought it was only an hour long. And it's just like one of those kind of murder mystery kind of fun shows. Uh, it sounds kind of weird, murder mystery fun show. But uh, <laughs> but I, I think it is worth it if you want to get a feel for kind of one of her more, you know, recent performances. And yeah, I and, and she does, like I said, she throughout, they bring her back in, they interview her. Uh, she has a, a variety of moments in the show, I think a significant amount of dialogue to kind of get a feel for how she handles these things. So yeah, the things that I wrote down was just range, strength of performance and the the relationships were was was completely uh believable so yeah that's i I absolutely recommend that one and and the last one on my list here that i have and this isn't like a huge role but she was part of black christmas in 2019 she plays a sorority girl and really i think it's the very beginning of the show where she has like the most significant part. It's like a, a minute and she's talking to somebody. Did either yeah. of you end up catching this one? Rhythma, did you, did you end up catching Black Christmas? No, you weren't able to? I yeah. don't have HBO Max. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, Nakomi, <laughs> did you see this one? I did. I did okay. watch the whole entire thing with- Nice. <laughs> <laughs> not begrudgingly, but at the same time, I was just like, because I'm not a big um, horror slasher movie kind of person, basically. But I was just like, you know, toughing it out for the, for the, you know, for the research purposes, basically. Sure. Um, <laughs> but you know, I found, I, 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 yes, that was she, that was her um, biggest part, and and she she did did really really well with that. Basically, she sounded concerned, and you know, she really yeah. sold it. And then basically, I was actually. Um, a little disappointed at how little she was in the show, not just yeah. because of the fact that yeah. I, you know, am obviously um, invested in knowing more about her, you know, but at the same time, um, she was the first person on on the screen. Yeah. So yeah. it was just like, OK, when is she coming back? Oh, no, you know. You, yeah. So um, <laughs> that, yeah, was so that was disappointing. I, 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 I felt the same exact way. I was like, wait, she just had this awesome kind of intro. And now I want to know more about this person. And I, I want to say that. If I could be wrong, and I don't want to ruin the movie for anybody, but I want to say that we don't see her again really until like she runs and jumps in the car <laughs> of of another a sorority girl. It's like we need to get out of here. Uh, maybe she there's yeah. other parts, but uh, like the, right before that, there was like a little ten second spot to okay. Um, okay. inside of the, the sorority house, her sorority house. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give away too much about the show yeah. in case. Sure, yeah, but, <laughs> but at the same time, it was just like, it, it, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I want to point out what you just pointed out. There's only a minute there, and I know it's not much to go from. Uh, and then there's at the end, she kind of there's some physicality. She she fights, you know, and you know that's uh, whatever that is. In, in the essence, you don't get a lot of shots of her, but probably believable in that sense. But I this minute moment, she walks into a room right at the beginning, and there's it seems like maybe it's it's a holiday kind of moment and looking for one of their sorority sisters who's not there and calls her, mentions that she got her a gift. And it, and it just, yeah, it came across. She sells it again. It's a minute. It's a minute. It's it, but it, again, it was one of those moments where it's like, okay, yeah, I can see her genuinely embed herself in a role that where I believe in that person, even in a minute. So that was, uh, I was very happy about that, you know, for the little that we did get her in Black Christmas. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I kind of wonder if there's some, you know, scenes that get cut later on. Uh, so let, let's let's kind of encapsulate this all here before we jump into Nynaeve. Overall, what do you think, uh, Rhythmo, would you say are Zoe's strengths that you see from her, from a career standpoint, like what she does well as an actress? Um, I think she does a good job of playing off of her other actors. So even if her partners aren't giving like the best performance, I still think that she on her end does a good job of selling herself and selling her character. And even when she has like kind of corny dialogue, you know, like Power Rangers and stuff like that, like I said, she still commits to it and she yeah. doesn't hold back. And I think she just does a good job of selling her characters, no matter, you know, the writing isn't good, her partners aren't that great, you know, whatever. <laughs> sure. She herself, I, I think, does a good job of doing her job. You know, like she she does it. Right. And... Yep. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a really we hadn't really brought that one up, and I think that's a great one to bring up, which is she plays well off of you know whatever she's been given, and I mm -hmm. and I saw that actually honestly, and I'm 
I, I'm not trying to oversell some of these young things that she did, but even in the new tomorrow and the Killian curse, I felt like that actually is this is is true. Uh, you know, when she was sitting in a classroom in the Killian curse, and she just has like some some short moments. She's actually kind of leads in the first episode and that just for the first minute or so, and yeah, kind of really played well against all the other actors in the scene. So yeah, that's a, thank you for bringing it up. That's a, that's a fantastic addition to this and maybe something that they saw. I kind of wonder, you know, when, why they, when they look at, you know, from an interest standpoint in her, you know, what they were looking for. And I would assume that that's something that, right? Nynaeve has to be good at that, right? Just from her roles. Uh, Nakomi, any just overall commentary before we move on to Nynaeve about Zoe Robbins and, you know, just kind of her acting skills. Yeah. Um, as far as her, as far as her um, acting skills, she seems like she has lots of range. Um, she seems like she basically, it, it, as far as being able to be, you know, tender and uh, and being able to be aggressive. But it, it, it the anger is what I kind of was missing. <laughs> I don't feel mm. like I saw enough of, you know, her the 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 seeing. I mean, I saw, you know, um, just just different. A little bit more, I mean, you know, of, of, of at least what I see, you know, uh, when I think of Nynaeve, basically. But at the same time, I feel like she definitely showed that she has compassion to come through, you know, uh, the character, basically, to, to, to relate to, to, to people, basically. Um, you know, I, I, I wish that, honestly, I didn't get a chance to really watch the um, the, the first two projects that she was on. Um, I, I really wish I, I would have had time to, to really do that. But because um, I, I think it might have basically lend a little bit more of seeing more of her range. But I think I got a good enough idea of her abilities right now. And I feel that she definitely, you know, has the ability to do a lot of the things that Nynaeve will will need to, you know, need to be, you know, uh, you know, be a wisdom and also, you know, be able to command, you know, command a crowd and, you know, take this basically, um, you know, deal with that sci-fi type of um, type of environment, you know, where, yep. you know, something can pop up out of nowhere, anywhere, and also just basically not run, run not run away from a fight. You know, so mm-hmm. I think that she really um, encap- encapsulated, uh, uh, you know, the abilities that basically um, a actor or actress who basically um, would portray Nynaeve uh, would have, basically. Yeah, by the way, <laughs> I uh, that was what I was hoping we would see in Black Christmas. So that was a disappointment. <laughs> I was like, like, I thought they were going to put her in this kind of situation where, you know, more kind of fighting for her life uh, kind of moments, which they do put other you know, actors in, uh, in that movie, just not her. I was hoping to get more mm-hmm. of that. So yeah, that was, that was kind of a bummer, but yeah, I think those are all great kind of summaries of what you've both seen. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Now I was just going to say that, Hey, that, that is, I mean, the fact that she basically stole the show at the beginning of, uh, of black Christmas, I give yeah. that, that gives her lots of kudos for that basically. So that just shows that she, you know, that she can basically grab, you know, be, you know, she's interesting enough. She, you know, she, she, has enough basically um gumption basically to mm-hmm. command when she's ready to command and i mean like i said for the little time that she's had on the shows that she's had um uh, whether she been a she's been a star or just basically a guest role she's memorable yeah and, and uh, uh bane and she had just wrote in chat that rafe's comment when she was announced he said uh, we had the pick of the world on those cast members on these cast members sent about two dozen 90 of tapes to the writer's room to see who everyone liked and every single person had one response zoe so yeah uh, definitely kind of winning over the audience both mm-hmm. on screen and off screen seems like something that she's uh, very capable of so yeah I, uh, I i think that's that in and of itself uh is uh is important for us to know about uh basically uh, about her as an actor coming into this role and so now let's transition i think this is a great time let's transition to talking about Nynaeve. And we'll we'll throw the we'll throw a little spoiler banner up for everyone. We're gonna move on to Nynaeve. Let's let's break down what we feel like and who we believe that Nynaeve is between the three of us and chat. And for those of you that happen to be watching us on Twitter and on Facebook, I can't see your comments right in this moment, but if you want to jump into chat and share your comments here, I'd love it. I'd love to see you here over on YouTube. Again, please remember to like this video while you're here and uh, also subscribe if you're not. We'd love to have you here all the way to the premiere. We've been doing live weekly shows just like this. So 
Okay, naive. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that's half of the reason why everyone's in chat because they want to talk about naive. So let me, uh, really, let me, let me start with you. Tell me, and just you don't have to just pick one. I know maybe that's difficult with naive, but pick one attribute that stands out to you when it comes to Wad on Prime needing to get naive right. What is an attribute that they have to translate right into the writing? I think. Okay, can I? I'm gonna cheat and do two words. Okay, you can do two. Her, yeah, 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 yeah. Go her for it. <laughs> selfless passion. So she's okay. I don't know if you want me to explain it, but yeah, yeah. Please passion, explain. Yeah, definitely, definitely explain what you mean by that. Absolutely. Yeah, because I think there's a duality with Nine because she is both obviously this very aggressive character at times, and even to the people that she loves the most, she can come off very abrasive, but the reason why she works as a character at least for me is the fact that she is always coming from a place of selflessness and even in the eye of the world when you know they leave and they obviously flee not just leave um she's she chooses to go on this adventure and her and Egwene are the only two that choose to go on this adventure and while Egwene obviously has different motivations the Nynaeve's motivations are to protect, you know, Rand and Matt and Perrin. And so I think it's that selflessness that really balances out her character and makes her work. And even when she's being like kind of petty, I know a lot of people don't like her because of that pettiness. It's it's because she's so selfless to me that she can be petty because, you know, she will she's the one who will go to bat for you every time. And so if she wants to be petty, she can be petty. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love that. And I'm seeing um, that with that selfishness that you talk about in the protector, uh, one word's coming up in chat a lot, which is the loyalty. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Kind of goes right along with that. Uh, that stands out absolutely about Nynaeve, uh, that those two aspects, and they have to get those right, or it just doesn't, wouldn't feel like Nynaeve. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, uh, Nakomi, is there is there an attribute that stands out to you where you're like they have to get this right or it just won't be naive? Oh, you're muted. I think oh, no. that's okay. No worries. Sorry. <laughs> um, I apologize, guys. Um, so um, I just thought of where I just decided to think of words that I would use to describe um, um, naive, basically, and what I thought of was um, driven and passion. Hmm. Passion was the first one that I thought of. Um, passion because basically, you know, she she has a passion for what she does. She has a passion for her village. She has a passion for, you know, um, just basically, uh, you know, needing to help somewhere, you know? So it, it definitely, um, Redeemer's, uh, Redeemer's words um, were, were were great, and it, it it was it was almost like we had the kind of the same I, the same idea, but that's when driven kind of came into my mind, and I was just like, is she's it, she, it's it's almost like I don't want to I don't want to give a sports analogy too late, um, but <laughs> she kind of she almost reminds me of like um like Michael Jordan, you know, mm. where okay. she 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 will latch on to something to give her, you know, some fuel for her fire that she's going to use to walk through the fires of hell with, you know what I mean? And so um, it, it's just, it, and Michael Jordan, if you anybody ever watched um, The Last Dance, basically, he kind of goes into, you know, how he used things as motivation um, to do what he had to do. But Basically, those two parts are what I think of when I think of Nynaeve. It's a person who basically can climb mountains and basically walk through walls. And, and mm. that is because of her passion that basically is the fuel that basically is going to make her walk through that wall. I love, I love that idea of her being driven. And absolutely, there's a piece of that which is very two rivers, right? That's very stu the stubbornness, as they used to always say, right? That's the two, river two rivers stubbornness. Uh, and I think that that comes through in her, her being a yeah. driven person, right? She's not satisfied. And I, and I, I actually, I, I, I take something really personal about that appeal. Like, I'm never satisfied <laughs> that is to mean like i'm always wanting to improve something about what my state whatever my life uh, what i'm doing um how i am as a person you know the world around me in that 
in, in that same way, I think that she, that, that comes across from at least to me from her. And that's what I do like about her is that she, mm -hmm. she never just accepts something at face value. And she's, so she pushes past boundaries. She's trying to stretch purposely because when people tell her that can't be done, I love that Jordan has a, a character that's like, but really, <laughs> you know, it's like, but it really can't be done. And I, I they, that absolutely must in my, in my, in my opinion, come across on screen. Mm -hmm. um, and before mm -hmm. I go back to your rhythm, I, I know we, uh, I know I have, uh, we have one caller. We haven't opened the call yet, the call lines yet, but I did I told tell this caller they could call in and share their opinion when we got to nine Eve. So let me bring this caller into the show. Uh, and it's someone you all know really well, Jenny, or as we know, we're here, lesbian nerdy is on the line. How you doing? Lesbian nerdy? Hey Jenny, how you doing? <laughs> hey, I'm good. I'm I'm so jealous you guys are on like a whole naive show. And I'm not on a naive show. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, so you're tell us. Spirit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're here. You're here now. You're on it. What are you yes, talking yes, about? Yes. <laughs> So uh, when it comes to naive, <laughs> that's true, that's true. If, you, if you were listening so far, we, we talked about kind of a selflessness, a passion, a driven nature, a stubbornness, and, uh, uh, you know, someone that mm -hmm. is never satisfied. What else stands out to you that Wadham Prime has to get right, Jenny, that, you know, that maybe we haven't brought up yet? Okay. Actually, I, I mean, I love hearing all of the things that everybody's brought up because those are all very true. But one of the things that I think I, I see in her that I – I hope that they get across is her vulnerability and her insecurity. Like Nynaeve is somebody who was put into a position of being a wisdom very young and like not on purpose. She didn't seek that job out. It was given to her when the previous wisdom died and she, everybody challenged her every single step of the way. Didn't believe her, didn't trust her. She had to become this person who, I mean, you know, when you're really young and you're put in a position of authority and people challenge your authority, you don't know how to command it. And so she learned to command it by being really aggressive and domineering because that was the only way that she knew how. I, I, I see imposter syndrome just all oh, over her. Interesting. Okay. Just insecurity. Yeah. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And I have to be good enough. And I have to do my best, but I'm not good enough. And I even see that in her relationship with Moraine. Like Moraine comes into town. The first thing she does, the very first thing she does to Nynaeve is call her a child. <laughs> which is gonna get her back up <laughs> and like because that is that, that is her feeling about herself in my opinion and then uh maureen doesn't have to like yell or anything everybody pays attention to her maureen heals people that she can't heal and then the one thing maureen does wrong that in nynaeve's view is steal those kids and then she goes after the kids and finds out that no nynaeve was right or maureen was right to do that basically every everything maureen does is doing nynaeve's job better than she could do it oh. and that makes Nynaeve feel like crap. I, I, I even see like her hatred to Maureen is a result of her hating, like feeling I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I have to be better. Yeah. What, and that's, I yeah, hope that that comes from. Interesting point about Moraine's uh, and calling her a child and, you know, and almost poking the, the bear a bit there from a, uh, yeah. from an insecurity standpoint, yeah. you know, uh, calling that out, the thing that everyone kind of, might have said, but don't because it's naive and you're not going to, you know, how to piss her off, you know, but Moraine's not afraid of that. Yeah. She's, she's bringing it up uh, in part. It does seem like to call attention to it. Jordan did a good job there in making and having her call attention to that. Uh, Rhythm, do you like this idea that the vulnerable nature uh, insecurity, do you see that just as well? Uh, anything to go along with what Jenny's saying? Yeah. Nynaeve definitely has a very vulnerable side to her, which one of my favorite things about Nynaeve and Lan is that she can be herself with Lan and she's very honest mm -hmm. with him and that's probably the best yeah I just totally agree Nynaeve definitely does have a very vulnerable side to her and yeah I, I love that be yourself <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's okay it's okay uh, the honesty with Lan aspect uh, seeing something a bit more real when she's with Lan than other places makes a lot of sense uh, mm -hmm. especially in that with the imposter syndrome that you brought up uh, Jenny yeah go ahead Nakomi I'm sorry um, may I real quick um, yeah I saw something when I was basically um, looking up her looking up her zodiac sign it, 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 it struck <laughs> me it was interesting it said um, 
uh, Mars and Cancer <laughs> makes you passionate about feeling secure. And without safe, without feeling safe, you will never feel like heating up the sheets. Your emotions are shaky, and fre frequently, um, and you frequently find your uh, work yourself into a frenzy over imagined tragic scenarios, and. Um, Oh, never materialized. Your ideal lover is a rom is a romance novel hero, deeply passionate, <laughs> macho, but vulnerable, and someone who can simultaneously rescue you wow, and need you. I swear to you, it's right there in the book. It's, that's fantastic. I was like, oh, that's getting flagged. I was that's, like, that's getting a flag. That's, I that love that you. By the way, this is this might be become <laughs> a part of this entire series. I am absolutely looking up the zodiac signs of all of the <laughs> actors from now, and this is fantastic. I love it. No, no, I that's. Have, I have an obsession, but I'm so sorry that. No, that, no, I, that I, I love it. I, I love was it. like, oh wow, that yeah, that's land. Look, we're that's doing land. a deep, we're doing a deep dive, and we're willing to yes. go places that other people yeah. aren't, and to the zodiacs we've gone. I love it. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jenny, I, I did want to ask you. <laughs> Uh, thank you for bringing up that imposter syndrome because that adds a lot to this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, did you have you seen any of the works? I know we, we've already gotten past that, but I wanted to ask you that question. Have you seen anything that she's done? You know, have you uh, of anything that we kind of discussed at the beginning of the show? No, I like okay. the the list you guys are going over. I came in a bit late because I don't know if you all realize this is like six o'clock in the morning for me. <laughs> yeah, so you're I, really I, good I to get up. Yeah. I'm very early for this. <laughs> so, um, but I was li listening to the list. I've seen interviews of her. Like when I was trying to find uh, find her, you know, information about her uh, when she was first cast. I only saw interviews. I could never find anything uh, that she was acting. And I did like in interviews. She's just very no nonsense and like yeah. just very direct and practical, which I like. But. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't seen any of her roles, okay. unfortunately. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you, I want you to go watch. Your your job is to go look in the description of this video. I want to hear your opinion about the Killian curse. you got to go watch the Killian curse. It's when she was younger. <laughs> I yeah, want to yeah. hear what you have to say. That's <laughs> I fantastic. absolutely will. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. Is, is there a final thought you want to leave to us? Uh, leave with us about Nynaeve before we let you go? Oh, I just, I mean, I hope that, my final thought, I hope that they realize in writing the show that she is the main character. And that, like, that is what they <laughs> focus on. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, There's an ignorance hey. standing here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Gwen and I need to be the two main characters. <laughs> Did you say Lance? If you would have gave Nynaeve about another two days, she would have healed, she would have brought somebody back to life. She does, she does the impossible. <laughs> I love it. I love it. A Nynaeve yeah. stand, a Gwaine stand, a Lanfear stand, and I'm not sure who Nakomi loves the most, but uh, <laughs> we'll have to figure that out. Hey, that is it's an Matt. awesome – Matt. Okay, Matt. I, I, I can see that. I can see it. Uh, hey, Jenny, thank you so much for calling in and for waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning and for sharing that with us. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have you back here at the inn sometime soon, okay? Bye, Jenny. Absolutely. Bye, -bye. Bye, Jenny. Bye. 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 Uh, it was awesome to have her. Yeah, I remember she she wrote me. She's like, "Oh my gosh, you're talking about Nynaeve. and I'm like, "Well, call. You can call in absolutely and, and give us your thoughts on that." I we've all, I think we brought up some really really compelling things about Nynaeve. If they get these things right, yeah, I'm I'm you know where she does you do see a change of being more herself with Lan than others. That you know seeing that differential from a writing standpoint, I hope we get that in dialogue. The and kind of also, vulnerability. Yeah, go for it. I think. One thing we didn't talk about yet has been how powerful she is. Like yeah. she's literally at one point like the most powerful channeler. And I think that really ties in with her imposter syndrome and the fact that she has this block. And I mean, that block is literally like a manifestation of imposter syndrome, I think. Uh, okay. Because yeah. She just doesn't, I don't know, on some, on some level, she has a hard time surrendering, which is a huge part of her character. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad that Lesby brought that up because definitely imposter syndrome is a huge part of Nynaeve's character. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just to go um, piggyback off of what you just said, um, I really feel like after she broke her block is when Nynaeve actually started to become Nynaeve. It, it, she, sure. she, she, she became more comfortable with herself not not feeling like she had to be this brute of a person basically to get things done. Um, I, I always, to myself, I'm, I'm glad she didn't come up against 
Cat Swain when she had her blop, because uh, I don't know the the kind of fireworks that that would have basically been. She she needed that. I guess humbling. I don't know if that's the right word I want to use. But during breaking her block, it, it was it was a release, you know, for her. So, you know, it, she just she she became, you know, even she opened up things that were even. I mean, you know, this more. Her she opened up her potential so much more, and that was like a, it was like an anchor, you know. I, I mean, I, I I'm, I'm I. The definition of the of um of um, imposter syndrome, I'm not completely sure on. I kind of get the gist of it from you guys. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we all kind of have a little bit of that um, sometimes, <laughs> right, right, right. and yeah. so um you know so but like at right the same now. time, it's like right <laughs> like right now. So but at, but at the same time, basically, I I feel like uh, yeah I I, re- I completely agree with Redima. That was a a, a very cl- key part of her of her um of her growth basically yeah. breaking I, her block yeah. i want to i want to i saw a comment uh, daniel green mentioned this that yes absolutely most powerful but also you know most inventive in some ways right like uh, looking at what she did and so i think we need to bring that into the play here is what she does with that power the the healing that she does and the creative healing that she does because you think about the healing aspect it touches on not only her village you know, but eventually Malkir, <laughs> you know, it touches on, eventually touches on uh, other male channelers out there and the, the mm-hmm. whole channeling world. Like she, she affects the entire channeling world with that, you know, being able to heal stilling and gentling and, mm-hmm. and, and madness, madness, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And she heal- did all of that with a block. Like imagine what she yeah. does now that she doesn't have a block. We're, right, by the yeah. way, we're doing full spoilers, right? This is full spoilers. Yeah. Yes. Just, okay. If you're still yeah. here, the yeah. things up, uh, it, this is going to go through the whole series. If you happen to be, you know, listening, we're going to spoil something possibly to the end of the book. So I, uh, I'm not apologizing. Just know that's going to happen. Go ahead. Rizma. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I just think it's far. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Call me. <laughs> no, I was just saying basically, um, yes, uh, it, it, the things that she's, that she did and was able to, I mean, literally Tom Onitz was, practically dead mm-hmm. and she yeah. brought him back and Egwene couldn't even disbelieve what she was seeing you know the weaves and the, the formations I guess can I just say real quick I always saw channeling being ribbon you know not ribbons but threads but they fall into like a lace pattern at when they do things just throwing it out there, wheel of time, people. Just throwing it out there. But anyway, that's what oh, I always yeah. saw. No, and so you, you, the you, tapestry that she can, can create, it just always, you know, it, it, that she can create in this. I mean, obviously, you know, it, it when she healed stealing, it was on one level, but, you know, it almost seems like Age of Legends type level of um, channeling, um, you know, when she does her other things like you know healing madness and uh, even when um i mean i know she was just basically a power conduit but um it's possible thing possibly things that she might have learned when ran was basically um healing madness i'm not healing madness cleaning the tank tank, Um, you know so you know just basically comparing what he did to the things that basically she did um when you know healing talmanis i was just like yeah she leveled up she really leveled (laughs) up you know so, yeah, yeah. Rhythma, you were going to add also, uh, what was it you were going to say? I have no idea. I have no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that happens. I'm so so sorry. I'm going I'm I'm to mention this. Sorry. The, the, uh, and I saw people talking about this, and it, maybe it came from something you said, Nakomi. I want to make sure, I, not to make sure, I hope that Rafe and his team do show the complexity of the things that she does, right? That she, the things that she creates, often other Aes Sedai are like, I think I followed that. I'm not totally sure that I did, you know? And so mm-hmm. I I want that to see that aspect in the show also, where you can see the complexity of those weaves uh, that she's able to come up with. And so, yeah, I, I think there's the inventiveness and powerfulness and complexity of the weaves. That's Those are all, you know, important piece of this. The healing, you know, when you bring her into, into also, you have to bring her into the cleansing of the taint too. Like she's part of the whole healing of, the world in many cases, you know, of just Feeling things the board. that are Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like mm-hmm. she's, she's part of all these pieces. So healing has to be core to what comes across 
from her in the in the show. Uh, anything else that stands out before we? Because I want to open the call lines here shortly. Uh, talk a little bit, maybe what fans might consider weaknesses or criticisms also here. But anything else on the strengths, uh, Rhythm? Do you have anything else that comes across that you think we haven't really, uh, you know, brought up yet? I, yeah, one thing I think about Nynaeve is that of all the characters, I think that she stays the same the most throughout the series. Mm. And that's mm-hmm. that's not a bad thing, by the way. I think that is one of her strengths is the fact that she's, she sticks to her beliefs and her moral code. Even when, obviously, when she goes through her Aes Sedai test, she literally fails it because she doesn't she doesn't adhere to their morality she has her own moral compass and she sticks by it and i that's my favorite thing about naini is that her stubbornness and i think that's the most like two rivers thing about her is her stubbornness even when she you know she starts wearing silk dresses or whatever she's still naive because she you know that's still her two rivers in her is you know her stubbornness and so yeah, I don't even know what yeah. the question was, but I want. Yeah, no, that was, that was a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was great. But, yeah, no, but, yeah, I, it makes that's me great. think of yeah. basically. It makes me think of when um when she was going to go take her test, and Rand basically was just like, "Stay yourself. You know, you don't change to be to become them." And then so that helped also for her, I guess, decision making, where she was just like. Whether you basically decide to make me uh, I Sedai or not, I'm gonna basically be me, and I'm go- I, you know, I have a life outside of this basically, and so you know, uh, you know, I have a man who loves me, and I have this talent. Unless you're gonna steal me on top of it, so you know, it obviously Egwene was just like on all of that, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, um, it, it, it her she stayed herself through the whole entire thing. I absolutely agree. She didn't change. Um, if anything, it, she she. She she evolved and and grew up. Yeah, I I, I man the I love that statement uh, that she didn't adhere to their morality. She she had her own moral compass and stuck to it. Yeah, like I, I honestly, in many ways, I think that some of these other characters, not that there aren't complexities to Perrin, Matt, Rand, and Egwene, but. Nynaeve is really much more complex when you start breaking her character down. We did a, a, a podcast episode. Uh, Barside Chats is a Wheel of Time podcast that we do out of the Dusty Wheel. And I do that with my friend Brian. And we talked about Nynaeve and just the nature of healing itself. And as we broke down kind of her plot, Robert Jordan doesn't have a lot of extra that she does like every, almost everything that she touches, I want to see in the show. Like, mm-hmm. like, yeah. th- like the, the stuff she's a part of is important always and you know that yeah you can make a case yeah. for the bowl of wins i agree like let's let's cut it but everything everything else that uh, i look i've looked like at that. i think is i i mean they can keep it i'm like just it saying all. like if i was gonna if i, I was need going to see them to run down the hill and basically stop the tumble that has to be in there <laughs> i need to see you know absolutely yeah. um she doesn't have a lot of fat on her character no 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 there's a lot no, of no. other characters who you could basically yeah. get rid of tons basically but yeah yeah she 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 definitely has a a a a, a really really good you know um good good role and i and and like we said she basically takes advantage of everything every time all the times that she gets so i'm i'm really yeah. looking forward to seeing what she what she can do with a good amount of dialogue you know yeah, she me too. you know yeah Absolutely. And, but like, like I said, this is a live call and talk show. Uh, the first hour we've been digging into what uh, the career looked like for Zoe Robbins, who Nynaeve is. We're going to talk a little bit more about merging them here, talk about some of the weaknesses in, you know, maybe Nynaeve's character or criticisms that fans come up with. Please give us a call. Uh, you, can, you can call us at 1 325 5968. That's 1 325 5968. Since we're kind of bringing these in a little bit late, we might not get to all of them. I apologize in advance, but we'll bring you in. We'll weave you into the conversation that we're having here. So if you have a comment about Nynaeve that you'd like to make or about Zoe's career, uh, but just please be respectful as we're talking about an actual human being out there and their career when you, if you call and you have a comment about it. Just keep that in mind as you pick up the phone. So with that in mind, I, I want to ask you both here about criticisms of Nynaeve's character. You know, one of the ones you brought up, uh, Rilma, was... You know, sometimes people look at her as petty. Uh, are there, do you have any critique of Nynaeve as a character where you think that she does have some weaknesses that are clear to you as you read the books? Um, 
I, I think that all of her weaknesses, I think that any character should have weaknesses, so I don't necessarily think of them as bad, even though gotcha. like, obviously sure. she is petty. Um, I think that she's really hard on Matt, like specifically mm. her relationship with Matt always, it didn't bother me, but I just didn't like how Nynaeve never recognizes how much Matt does for her and, you know, how he rescues her and just he I think she's like very stuck in the way that she sees him like from her childhood as like this very mischievous kid and she never really grows out of that and specifically with Matt I feel like even like by the end she still sees him like that even though he's obviously grown so much and I think yeah that's that was like that's like the one thing yeah. about Nynaeve that always bothered me is that she is so hard on him um and she has like obviously matt is like very flirt flir flirtatious with like a sure. lot of people and that yeah. bothers her even though she herself is like very flirty at times um, <laughs> so i think she can yeah. be a bit of a she can be a bit hypocritical but like i love 90s i don't have any i don't have a lot of bad things to say about her when it comes to critiquing yeah no that's a that's a really good one and by the way we already have like five people in queue so i'm gonna take down this phone line we'll, we'll bring those five people in uh to the call here and be, before i bring the first caller in uh nakomi i think that's a great call out hard on matt that's a that's an that one does kind of great a bit on readers is there anything else where you think either she grows out of something or it's just it's just part of naive that is more kind of a critique that you have i i mean i i've always been i guess um when, when I basically um, think of all the characters, I kind of relate them to myself and see if how the differences that I have to them. And um, the fact that she feels that she needs to basically be the um, hardest, most, you know, um, you know, um, loudest, not loudest voice, but she feels that she needs to basically always be in control rather than just letting things happen a little bit and me I'm, I'm more of a kind of like um you know laid back so basically it just that 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 always basically rubs me a little bit wrong but i feel like definitely she evolved out of that as uh, definitely a lot i mean she still has her own her her personality she reminds me of my mom it's funny um because basically <laughs> she, she she never thinks she's wrong and basically mm. she will argue uh, her, argue you under the under the the couch basically and so you just give up and 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 and, and surrender so um but and which is I probably need to get on the couch because of that. Uh, but at the same time, it, I just really feel like um, she does evolve out of that, but she still stays herself, uh, you know. She does, she realizes her other strengths. So um, yeah. that, that's that's just a part, And but I feel like she basically evolves out of that. The Matt part yeah. definitely does bother me too, basically. I, I But I kind of feel that that's everybody's issue with Matt because I personally, even though Perrin and, <laughs> Perrin and Rand were his friends, I kind of feel like it's unfortunate that the reader's first, 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 you know, um, impression of Matt basically came through the mouths of Rand and Rand and Perrin. And so, honestly, I wonder if 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 Matt knew that's how they thought, whether he basically would stick stick around, you know. But um, yeah. yeah, it's it, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. And and I've seen a lot of comments in chat like, well, maybe she just has you know possibly a lot of history with Matt, <laughs> and she can't let that one go. Maybe there's been a, some, lot, it's a lot of yeah, switching, yeah. a lot of but switching. But no, it's it, it is interesting <laughs> to see what people pick up on. Like you're uh, tied it into some personal relation, you know, personal relationship you had with your mother. You know, a lot of my uh, relationship with these characters came from when I first read the books and I was 15. So I have a lot of old, deep seated thoughts about them that as rereads go on and as we have conversations like this, they kind of drop away. Like Nynaeve was not one of my favorite characters growing up but absolutely is one of my favorite characters now <laughs> as we talk about her and dig into her. And as I have uh, recently, absolutely uh, love her as a character. Let me, let, let's bring in our first caller into the show. Uh, it is uh, Jonathan. Jonathan, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. This has been a great conversation so far. So what, do you, what comment do you have for us about Nynaeve? Well, I wanted to talk about some of my anxieties and biggest fears that I have for the TV show. Okay. Uh, I actually wrote about it on your Discord. Okay. But so my biggest fear is for Nynaeve and Zoe Roberts is that the TV fall back on and relies on historic old tropes of like an angry black woman. 
to do a lot of the legwork to explain Nani's and her anger and stuff instead of actually going through and telling the story as it's written to, yeah. you know, skimp out. And I feel like they have to be very careful and conscious to not do that in the show because it's very important. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a fantasy show with a black woman in the lead role. Sure. So yeah. that's just one of my thoughts. Yeah, no, that's a, that, and that's I'm a, a black man myself. So <laughs> I'm, yeah. it's really important that they don't fall back on, Oh, she's just an angry black woman. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And I, I hear that. And obviously I'm not hearing it from the perspective of uh, feeling that f- as a black man, but I absolutely understand that from the perspective of what people have said and and how they talk about that as definitely something that's, uh, that is an important for, thing for them to be considering with Nynaeve. Uh, Rhythma, how do you feel about that as far as any concerns from a writer standpoint that they might fall back on some kind of more social tropes that we have today? Yeah. Um... I think Lesby said this perfectly because if you have all of Nynaeve's like anger and none of her vulnerability and you don't allow her that 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 space to be vulnerable and to show that she's not that she's angry for a reason and that she has reasons for being like this it will definitely fall into that trope and I'm really glad that um, Jonathan brought this up thank you for bringing that up because that was something that I thought of and I wasn't sure if like other people had that concern but yeah i think that as long as they approach it with the you know with the the fact that nynaeve is a three-dimensional character in mind i don't think it will be a problem especially because obviously the books weren't written with that trope specifically but yeah i I, it's definitely a, a thing i i hope that they would keep that in mind and be mindful of that at, at least and just aware but I don't yeah. think it will be a huge issue because, you know, Nynaeve is a very three-dimensional character and she does have a lot of other things other than her anger and her, you know, her frustrations. So yeah. that's what well, like, I think. Well, like we just talked about, there's so many p- parts to Nynaeve. And yeah, that would be a shame. I can't imagine Rafe and his team doing that. Like, uh I can't imagine it happening, but it's totally possible, right? So, yeah, that would, that would be a huge shame if they did because there's so much about Nynaeve that is uh, that is to be remarked upon and to be built as a character. Jonathan, what's your uh, – I know that was a trepidation you have. What's the what's the thing that's gotten you most excited then about the show itself coming out? Like if you could say this one thing I can't wait to see or this one thing that I know that they've done I'm the most excited about, what would that be? Oh, well, I'm just really excited for the uh, the whole show. I've been – listening since the beginning to your adaptation and oh fun and the world time comes to life it's one of my favorite shows or book series so i'm excited all around i'm really am excited but i still have fears and anxieties so oh yeah but other oh, yeah. than that i'm just happy to see it come to life yeah absolutely feel the same way uh i'm really excited that it's that it's coming and still have fears <laughs> with you there. Hey, Jonathan, thank you very much for uh, following along here at the Dusty Wheel. Absolutely appreciate it. Thank you for sharing that thought. Uh, absolutely appropriate. And have a good afternoon. Okay, man. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, sorry we lost. Uh, I know we lost Nakomi here. Hopefully she'll be able to jump back in with us uh, here soon. We'll bring her back in as soon as we have her. But let's uh, let's bring our next caller into the show. You all know this next call really well. Lancer or Norm, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How you doing? Great and keeper, of course, as always. I raise my glass to you, sir. And Rhythmund, very nice to meet you, my Cheers. lady. I would, I'll raise my glass to you and everyone in chat. What's up? Raise the glass. <laughs> so. <laughs> so what's going so, on, Norm? Yeah, so. Oh, well, you know, okay. The one word that I have not heard uh, from everybody about uh, Nynaeve is her is her courage. Oh, I mean, okay. she yeah. having to leave pretty much everything that you know to go off and, as uh, Rhythma did say, that to to go off and, and and protect, you know, the kids when they left. I mean, having the courage to do that, and basically she went off literally by herself to do this. I mean that that's something that uh that is, is some that's like essential and 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 part of of Nynaeve that I love and also she's also the f- the first person 
uh, Rizma, if you remember, she was the first person to actually acknowledge that match saved her and said, thank you. So that's why she is, in true. my mind, this, in my mind, uh, to use uh, um, the sports analogy uh, for Nakomi, that's why she's the Tom Brady. She's a GOAT. I mean, she <laughs> she is the yeah. best. Of the uh, of the female characters, she's my number one, and Avienda would be my one A. But yeah, I <laughs> she has to. She's she has to have that uh, courage to admit that she's even wrong because she's also she's also has that about her. She's like, I'm right about this, that, and the third. And then when Egwene checks her on, you know, uh, when like, hey, I'm the I'm the uh, I'm rolling seat. Would you would you stand for that way when you were with them? And she was like, "Oh wait, yeah, no, I wouldn't, huh? Okay, yes, mother." You know, when she <laughs> she admits that when she admits that Rand is he has to be himself and has to be the dragon uh, reborn in order to do what he does. You know, she finally relents and's like, "Okay, I'm gonna follow you. You're not the kid that I literally changed the diaper to like maybe 15 years ago, but." Yeah, you're a man now. Okay, you're the man. And then the, the top it off, this is my cherry on top. Yeah. When uh, when Moraine comes back, when Moraine comes back, she just breaks down and gives her a hug. You know that. Oh, she yeah, that was even a say great word. She just she just <laughs> she just gives her a hug, and 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 has that tear going down her eye. That that to me that that just. You know, that's courage. That's like admitting, okay, my bad. I thought you were a, a witch with a capital B, but you know what? My bad. <laughs> yeah. And, that's, you know, much love. So. Yeah. By yes. the way. Uh, yes. Evolve is a great word. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Lancer, have you checked out any of Zoe Robbins' work before I let you go? I think courage is a fantastic one, but have you have you seen any of the stuff that Zoe Robbins has done up to this point? Quite honestly, I want to go in blind and just be completely okay. astounded by everyone's yep. work when they go in. So that's that's, that's legit. That's legit. I totally get that. Uh, absolutely. Thank you for bringing courage to the show. I like it. That's a, that's a fantastic thing to have uh, illuminated for us that we hadn't brought it in yet. So, hey man, always he awesome to hear your voice. I love seeing you. Your name come up as next in the show. Uh, I really appreciate you you continuing along here on the journey that is the Dusty Wheel, man. Talk to you soon. Okay. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, Take absolutely. care, everybody. Bye, bye. Yeah, sorry. I call me to call me to call me. She uh, she lost internet. So oh, no. hopefully, hopefully it gets back before the show's over. We have uh, three other callers here. Uh, you know, fantastic comments uh, from both our callers so far, Jonathan. And, and thank you so much, Lancer. By the way, if you're watching this later after the live stream, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear what your thoughts about some of Zoe's works. You know, what are your favorites? You know, what do you think she does well? Again, remember, she's a human being. Please don't use comments as ways to tell us what you hated about her performance. Uh, and it's, a, it's an interesting commentary, but just don't use it as kind of like, a, you know, a, a hate comment thread, please, after the show. So anyways, uh, yeah, I'm appreciating seeing all the comments. Everyone in chat, if you've never watched the show before, chat is a second experience. I often go back after the show and... <laughs> and watch what was going on in chat. I try to bring some of it into the show, but I fail uh, often. So let's uh, let's bring our next caller into the show. And I, uh, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. Who's this? Uh, hello, Matt. How are you doing? Fantastic. Is this Double? Excuse me? Uh, who is this? Uh, it's Santi. I'm calling from France. Oh, welcome, welcome! So, thank you so much. Sorry, I wasn't you. sure. I saw the I saw the number you were calling on. I wasn't sure if you were a, a, another a international yeah, it's, caller. It's so, welcome, welcome and to the show. It's very, oh, thank you, thank you. It's very late here, and I'm very tired, so I'm just going to jump in. Um, I started the series in 2020 with my mom, and I remember I have loved Nana since her first line. I I just love her. I just love Nine Naive. And my mom, she uh, she's currently read, reading the last book. And she told me once that you can't understand Nine Naive without being a mom. Because <laughs> she said that uh, we, we can't hate Nine Naive. Uh, people just don't understand her. Uh, uh, the, the funniest thing she, she said to me was that uh, if she, she were Nine Naive, uh, she would kill uh, Maureen in, in the first book because you can't just come <laughs> into the village 
and take my children and and go go away with them. That's not understandable. And I I I said uh, it's it's very 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 true because people keep saying like keep saying that Nayani should uh, keep calm and just stay 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 stay, uh, stay stay calm. But I think that she's very mommy in certain way, even though the or the, the boys and Iguen are just uh, some years uh, younger than her. But I think that during during all the series, uh, she just wants to protect them to, to the end. And till that day, I don't think people can uh, hate Nanaive. I don't think that. She just, uh, people don't just understand her. Uh, and the thing I love the most about her is uh, loyalty uh, to Ryan, uh, first of all, because people don't talk about that very much, but she's the, the only woman beside uh, Maureen, maybe, uh, that uh, Ron trusts. So I think she's a great character. I think she might, she's my favorite character in the fantasy genre, not only in the series, but in uh, from all the books I have read, Nana, she, she's the best. She's really the best, the best, the best. Yeah, the, fantastic comment. Uh, I, I love the idea that your mom said that if she was ninety, if she would have killed Moraine in the first book. Yeah, I understand I, that. <laughs> absolutely, that's that is a great comment. Uh, you know, and especially coming from yeah a mother. You know, and I think when I was reading the books as a kid, I think I felt that about Nynaeve, which was very much a mother figure for me, and I didn't like that. Yeah. Right, like I was I was annoyed by that. But as I become you know a parent. Yeah, absolutely. The way that she loves and cares for these kids is uh, very much like that. And the way that she wants to protect them from Moraine, absolutely. And so I think the best way yeah. to understand her, the best way to understand her certainly is, I think, as a parent, you you can totally understand what she's, uh, what, what yeah, she's feeling yeah. and why she makes the choice she does. And so I can't wait for the show because uh, I, I have watched some uh, episodes of uh, Shadow Chronicles with uh, Zoe. And she was great. I think she can really handle the uh, the naive vibe. I I think she would she would do well. She would do very great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think she has that one to a T. I think you're right about that. Yeah. Uh, any any comment here, Rhythma, before we we let uh, let him get back to get back to sleep here? <laughs> uh, no, but I just, uh, I just want that. to say hi to Rhythma before going. Uh, I love what you do on Twitter and on YouTube. You are great. Just keep doing it. <laughs> Oh, thank you thank you shout out to your mom shout out to your mom yeah please do was, yeah tell her thank her. you yeah t- tell her take you thank you for us yeah thank you so much hey have good a good, have a good evening good night and please do call back okay thank you yep bye-bye yeah what a what a great comment here uh yeah i, I loved that absolutely um and we sorry we don't have any nakomi back yet uh so that's kind of a bummer uh, hopefully we'll get her back in here soon. And um, uh, I'm going to have uh, Terry, you want to grab that plug back here for this, for this laptop? Yeah. <laughs> She's down below there. <laughs> Sorry, for some reason it's a, the, the plug isn't working. So this, this computer might die. I mean, that'd be fun. Uh, oh, no. But that's, uh, that's I'll do, okay. I'll do the dusty road by myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, so, let me uh, let me just see if that's gonna yeah there we go that worked perfect thank you so much <laughs> so there we go Innkeeper's wife uh, keeping it real and helping us keep the show going by uh, making sure this plug was turned I don't know what happened there so that's fantastic that last caller was fantastic and Nakomi's back this is so great <laughs> welcome back uh, no yeah Bain- back. good yeah to be that's here. yeah it's awesome to have you here so fantastic and let's bring in our next we have two more callers to the show. And then we can kind of tie up last thoughts and uh, and end for the for the afternoon. It's been it's been wonderful. I love this so far. So let's bring in Carolina to the show. Carolina, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, Matt? Always fantastic. Always fantastic. I love this stuff. Right? There's always a little nervousness before every show, and then we get in, and the hour and a half just flies by. So, uh, so how are you doing? And what are your comments so far about Nynaeve and Zoe Robbins? Yeah. Uh, well, first I'll say I both I love both your content creators that you have on today, and uh, I specifically want to say that Redima's uh, Twitter is giving me life every single day. So far. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you're not following Redima on Twitter, 
you need to go do that now. Seriously, uh, you will thank yeah, us. I think I tweeted that her, um, that her tweets are the flame of Tarvalon the other day. Um, and that's, <laughs> well, thank you. I love it. I love it. I love uh, it. Anyway, so... Okay, so my question is, you guys have talked about how her story in the books, and I, I totally agree, is very kind of smoothed out, and there's really no fat to it. Um, is there anything, I mean, you did say the bowl of wins, but is there anything that you would like uh, added maybe in the show, something you didn't see or something you could see added that isn't even mentioned in the books about something to do with her storyline or her character? Hmm. Ooh, good question. Yeah. Uh, my guess first on this one. What are your thoughts? Uh, I'm Nicole, sorry, I totally what? like blanked out. What was the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> sorry, no I was hoping that you would save me. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, hilarious, yeah. Go for it again, yeah. Uh, Caroline, you want to give the question one more time to the guest? Yeah, Yeah. sure. Yeah, so just that uh, her story is quite straightforward, not straightforward, but it's uh, streamlined in the books. Is there anything you want added, anything you want to see that we didn't see in the books? Any off-screen, off-screen naive scenes that you think would be useful or helpful for us to, uh, yeah, for the show itself? Right off the back of my head, I, I can't think of anything right now that could be added except for like, you know, fan fiction after the books, basically, like just a scene of hey. her and Lan rebuilding the Seven Towers. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Sorry, <laughs> so, so, I, I'm, so, not that, I'm not that creative. So ending scene, <laughs> I, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, that one's a good one. Um, you know, Rhythm, any idea of, that you would say from a, just something we don't see in the books where you, where you wish we had seen it? Um, I, yeah, I also agree with Nakomi. I have a, my personal thing is that I want, I think that watch should have been like 20 books long. So I definitely would have liked to see like post last battle, Lana Nynaeve, like, just babies. rebuilding Malkir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, Mandar babies. frolicking <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the fields. <laughs> um, but I think it would have been interesting to see if Nynaeve, I don't know, just like more Nynaeve and Egwene content, like later on in the series. Mm -hmm. I think that they are such a great, they have like this really great, like sisterly bond. And I love how Nynaeve is very supportive of Egwene as the Emerlin. And, you know, I think that it was like Egwene and Elaine's, or no, it was Nynaeve and Elaine's support that really helps her get through like that period where she has like a very shaky authority. And yeah, I mean, I don't know anything specifically, like if we were like changing plot lines, maybe I would like Nynaeve to stay back with Egwene. And, you know, I know a lot of people don't like the Bowl of Winds plot line, so maybe that would be one change I would make is like maybe Nynaeve stays with Egwene and helps her, you know, build her credibility in Saladar. But I mean, I, we're going off I, into like <laughs> weird characters, <laughs> like not not uncharted territory. But, I can yeah. see I can see more of the scenes where she's actually working to heal people that maybe it doesn't work the first time, you know, I, not that we, we get some of those, but you know, I, I would like to see, you know, it's, it's fun where it just kind of happens. It's just like, Oh, cool. But it feels a bit, <laughs> feels like a bit too yeah. like plot convenience at times. Yeah. So it would be interesting in my opinion to get more of what's going on in her mind. And I, and I know, uh, I know that this is the, uh, I know this is the aspect of, uh, yes, that's part of what she's doing, which is it comes, you know, it comes in that moment because of that moment. So I get that it's not all practice makes perfect, but it might be interesting to see her build some of these, uh, build on some of these talents that we don't, we, we don't get because we're gone. So like maybe uh, like a boo-boo, like a kid walks up to her with a boo-boo and she basically like rubs it. And out of nowhere, you know, the kid feels better and the kid walks away and barely even has a scratch. And it's nothing that specifically, you know, um, you know, it's, oh, it looks like it's magic, but at the same time, it's just like, huh, but I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit yeah. too um, yeah. There's obvious. There's a scene like that in, I don't remember what book, because the last book, <laughs> the last like three books just blur together. But there's a scene where she, I think she's in, I don't know. I don't remember where she is, but she goes and she tells those parents and she's like, ask I to die for help. Like, we're here to help you. And I love that scene. I think that scene is just like naive personified like she just like goes to this person and she's like ask me for help i want to help you and she's just like really <laughs> aggressively passionately helpful and that yeah i want more of that if anything 
so so Carolina, I, I I would imagine you you have one in mind with this question. Uh, is there one that kind of uh, kind of comes to you that you think would be perfect for this? Um, you always love to turn it on me, Matt. Last I time do. I dropped my call. But, uh, <laughs> you, you're gonna drop I'm your call this time. Here, so. <laughs> This time, I, um, I, uh, this, no, this is the, for, for, go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, for anyone that ever interviews somebody, that's the perfect trick is always turn back a question yeah. to the person asking it. <laughs> so go for it. Uh, yeah, it does work. It does. It gives you ideas. I mean, even just hearing that, I was like, oh, wow, maybe this, maybe that. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I love that, uh, that scene in the book. And I get, she, you might've just mentioned this, the kind of, uh, when she takes like the, this is a big spoiler. One second, one, one second before Ashman. you, one second before you do that. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, we did get some people in chat asking. Uh, yes, we have the the spoiler banner up. People new just jumped in. This isn't a spoil thing, it's possibly uh, through the end of the series, so you might want to step away. The first half is pretty like spoiler free, so if you go back and watch our discussion with Zoe Robbins, I think you're pretty safe. But uh, mm-hmm. things are going to be spoiled here. And that being said, sorry, I, did, I apologize for interrupting, Carolina. Which one were you bringing up? No, you're good. Um, the when she takes like the 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 insanity out of the Ashman's brain, I just thought that was just so satisfying to read, and I really I want to see that. But I like I, I guess this is kind of into like what you're talking about, like at the end of the books when things go on, like she'll go into those places and go into the Black Tower and maybe help people and train them. But I think my my, my like initial thing I really want to see is actually from the beginning of the books before she even knows that she can wield the power like I really want to see more in-depth scenes of her healing people I really want to see the scene of her uh helping Egwene when she was about to die you know like I really I don't know I I guess those are kind of in the books but like I want to see it really fleshed out yeah yeah more of that would be really awesome I think um you know more conversations between her and Moraine why not you know like give us more of that stuff (laughs) more confrontations there the better in my opinion (laughs) Uh, I would, I would love that. Yeah. yeah. Great, great question. Uh, you know, I, and I'm asking everybody this, that, that jumps on your, uh, your number four or five today. Uh, have you, have mm-hmm. you seen any of the stuff that Zoe's done so far? You know, is that something you plan on doing, watching some of the, the works these actors have done prior to the show or are you like Lance or you just don't want to come in and, um, you know, and, and not have any kind of bias to what the, my, the, whatever the actor or their, their skill level is. Um, I've like seen some clips. I haven't gone out of my way particularly, but I, kind of like what everyone ha- you guys have been saying is that I kind of noticed in those clips that she has quite a, uh, a presence. Like she's quite honest. Like I think um, I'm a filmmaker, so this is kind of from my perspective as a casting. What you're often looking for is that when they deliver a line, they're responding to the actor in front of them instead of delivering a line. And she's doing that. So I, that was the yeah. thing I was looking for. And I was really happy with that. Yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a good call out and and yeah, something we talked about today. Uh, I think that she does that really well. Like I said, for those who are watching, we linked all of those shows in the description of this video. Go watch some of them; they're fun. And I don't know why I keep on plugging the Gillian curse, but go watch it. I want to hear everyone's reaction to it. <laughs> uh, episode six, I'm telling you, that's the one. Hey, Carolina, thank you so much for calling in. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me. You guys have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Night. Night. So uh, we have one one more caller. We'll bring that caller in just a second. Uh, I did want to thank everybody. I, uh, Daniel Green point, pointed out we didn't have Super Chat on. I threw it on. It's a it's a weird part of the show for me. You know, you guys are awesome for wanting to support the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, if I can't call you out and say thank you or address your question, oh, geez, Jason, uh, you guys, yeah, this is this is the hard part because I'm like now I'm like oh my gosh, I, now I'm embarrassed a little bit. Everyone's the people are putting tips in the in the chat. So thank you. And if I don't call you out, I apologize. But Village Mattress. Jason, thank you so much. Uh, Miss Sarah James and Daniel, that's obviously not a requirement of this experience. Enjoy, you know, uh, enjoy here at the Dusty Wheel. This will always be how we do it here. But of course, if you do leave something, that's you're, that's wonderful too. <laughs> and yes, uh, raising funds for Man Fear. And if you don't that they don't know what that is, you have to just catch a previous episode where uh, I think it was a week ago, and you learn all about Man Fear. Okay, but we're here to talk about Nynaeve. Let's bring our last caller in, and then I want to get your last thoughts, uh, both in the Comey and, uh, and Rhythma. Uh, let's bring Art into the show. Hey, Art, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing? Hey, guys. How are you, how are you all doing? Fantastic, Good, fantastic. You? Thank, well, you thank, for, you. thank you for being our last caller. 
Oh, I'm the last one. Oh, jeez. I made it good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. like uh, We have today. Uh, thank you guys for being on. I, I, I was overjoyed to see you guys. Yeah. Uh, Glad my to be guests here. are wonderful. So, uh, so uh, what's what's yeah, your um, yeah? What's your comment? Well, I'm almost. I was coming in just to kind of like comment, but um, Jonathan, your first your first caller, yeah, like I found that very poignant what he was saying. Uh, the point he was trying to get across, and it kind of links into what I'm saying. Um. So recently, I've been watching stuff like when I have time, like uh, Bridgerton and of course Hamilton uh, has been out and it's kind of changing the way people, you know, view uh, entertainment in general, but uh, like people of color, um, like myself as well. Um, we, yeah, I, I kind of feel that really deep, like that into that anticipation, that anxiety of, um, seeing people cast as what would be, um, I don't know, traditionally uh, uh, a, a non-person of color uh, role. Like, but I don't know why that, that that's, that's almost been ingrained in a lot of our, our minds. Like fantasy is the realm of uh, Western Europe and uh, we're not used to seeing that like so outright. But, you know, I also got to give a shout out to you, you Matt, and um, Daniel Green, like touching on that kind of like, I'm going to say controversy, but it is. So there's, there's a little bit of a blow black, blowback about um, casting decisions and people of color if it's a social justice movement thing. And um, I mean, that really hits hard. And um, your panel is very, is perfect. I mean, like, I'm, I'm saying this like, is Zoe being cast as like basically, like, you can argue she's like, you know, almost the main, main character because she basically, she's the, yeah. You know, female in a lot of people's minds. Yeah. And um, if she has that to show, does she feel that, like as an as an actress, as a maybe even if she has any social social activism activities? Uh, does she feel that weight of being uh, comfortable, like just playing a woman of color and having the reins, basically? You know, outside of Rosamund Pike, she's she's pretty much like, I don't know not as big of a role as uh many of it ultimately so i don't know any comments on that i just kind of have a, that kind of comment going on yeah no that's great comments and nakomi any thoughts um definitely um that's something that came to mind when i'm just just watching um you know her uh, I, and and of course first first off um again kudos to you and daniel green for doing that that was great for that you guys actually um address that and it 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 at the very least, it, pre it presented receipts, you know, to 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 at least expel, you know, um, any type of in you know canon support to any ill feelings that people would have towards the casting. Uh, obviously, like I said, I addressed it in a video, basically saying that it caught me a little bit off guard because I wasn't expecting it, but more so not exactly saying that. Yeah, I thought that that was that, but at, at the root of it, I just have a feeling, at least, that we have come. I mean, some people might not agree with me, but I I I I like I I I follow Rafe from the beginning that of um, him be, him being um, announced as a showrunner, and I when he announced the casting, it made me really feel like you know what. I don't believe that he it was divisive how he cast the show. I feel like on I, I at least I personally felt like he was going after the best available talent. And so watching Zoe and her um, her ability to basically just morph into the many different roles, she's a, a word that came to mind when watching it, professional. That's how I would describe um, Zoe's portrayal of a lot of her her roles. They're diverse. They're different types, young, old, you know, in relationship, not whatever it basically was. Um, she was professional and she basically was efficient with her time. And basically I feel and, and so I feel like that probably my uh, hopefully that was a something that obvious that that shown through when she was doing her um her um her you know, um, 
interviewing for the for the roles basically but um that's just something that basically comes to my mind when i think of um the whole thing with diversity and i'm, the, I'm just like you know uh, it, it you could con it's like any other you know idea you could connect lines however you personally in your brain see it supposed to be you know but at the same time i i'm glad that it's a sign it almost it almost felt like a sign of the times in hollywood in entertainment that they basically more so are going after the more the more capable and talented people rather than basically going into norms sure yeah uh, Rhythma, any comment here uh, for uh, regarding what Art was saying? Yeah, um, you guys touched on a lot of stuff, but I think the thing that I always say when people are like, oh, they're making this diverse, like they're politicizing it. I just think that it's not political, like people exist in the real world. Like, you know, like yeah. people who people of color exist in the real world. And like, if you have a show about magic and like all this stuff like you can have people who are not white in there and it hon honestly it makes more sense to me to have a diverse cast than not because wheel of time is so diverse like one of my favorite things about the sh the books is that there are so many different people and that they come across so many different people and yeah to me it just I don't know, like, if you want to complain about it, I guess, go ahead. But, like, people exist in the real world, and those people deserve to see themselves in TV shows. And just personally, I am, I don't know, when I see the cast, it makes me just really happy that, like, wow, this is my favorite fantasy series, and it's full of people who look like me, you know? Like, it's not full of people who don't <laughs> represent me, so that I... I'm just really excited for the show. Yeah, Alana Trayvon in chat said, uh, as a black woman, it means a lot to me that one of my favorite characters, tie between Rand and Nynaeve, will be played by a black woman. Never had that as a kid. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you brought up the video that Daniel and I did. Daniel's in chat. And thank you again, Daniel, for uh, letting us uh, put that video uh, in your, you know, for inviting me to your, onto your channel and uh, to take part in that video. And that was, again, uh, like people have brought this up, you know, we weren't trying to justify the existence of by finding the receipts, but the receipts exist, if you will, right? Like it's the fact that people were even making an issue of it, uh, that was offensive. Uh, but, and the fact that they've, they've missed out just this key portion in my mind of the wheel of time world, like that is the world. And I don't, I don't understand why anyone one day actually dig into it. Um, would disagree with that or would be offended by it or wouldn't see this as just like par for course of where our world is today and also where this world is in the wheel of time. So, uh, yeah. So I, Art, thank you for bringing that back up and for all your comments here. I've really appreciated seeing the comments in chat too. Uh, so I, I've again, I'm missing out on a lot of the comments people are making about this particular uh, comment itself, but yes, absolutely. Uh, I think it was Amer is uh, one of the unofficial cast members. He hasn't been officially announced yet, but he said, I thought it was him that said on Twitter that, you know, he was a part of a scene and literally the most diverse scene he'd ever been part of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. filming on this show and how just, uh, you know, amazed he was. So, yeah. And um, I think Rafe said this on Twitter where he was like, the books were really progressive when they came out so it makes total sense for the show itself to be progressive when it comes out in 2020 so that sure. it, yeah. it's just makes sense to me yeah absolutely I, yeah so yeah again thank you very much Art. any, any final thoughts yeah go for it yeah just, just for the comment like um as I, was, I was listening and, you know, just hearing John's voice, he, you know, he kind of has that trepidation, like, you know, I, I, I did, but it just, I just dawned on me. I'm like, when I was reading this, these books, like you were at like 15 or 14, um, when you're reading and you're a young reader, you basically cast the, the book with people, you know, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a person of color. I'm a Filipino American. And, I immediately cast Nineveh as my older sister, right? <laughs> so without even knowing, I had cast, you know, I had cast her role as a person of color. And that just strikes me. Like, I didn't even think about it then. But, like, when it comes to showing it on a TV show, 
I was just struck, like, between the eyes. I was poleaxed, if you would use one of um, Robert Jordan's favorite sayings. Like, why would I even, like, have that kind of trepidation? It's like, it's yeah. it's natural for us to, to envision ourselves in these characters anyway. So I just think it's really odd that, you know, uh, especially us people of color, like, have to even, like, consider that. But, you know, it's the world we live in. But um, on a parting note, I'll, I'll just yeah. say um, – you guys have been very beautiful, and I, I just love the fact that um, you had you have people of color to talk about these issues, which are you know which are there. But shows like recent shows like Bridgerton, like or any sign of the times, like it's just nothing to put people of color in any role, and nobody yeah, will like, blink. I, and I just find that fascinating. Yeah, like they're just people you know, <laughs> at the end of the day. They're just right. actors yeah. doing their job. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, let, let's let's hope that that is. Um, no. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's uh, no, just just to say goodbye. Like uh, Matt, don't have any um, trepidation about being a man fear in anybody's minds. As a gay man, <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> All right. uh, yeah, my only trepidation there, Art, is getting into the costume. <laughs> that's, my, that's my biggest trepidation. <laughs> so, hey, th- Art, thank you so much, man. Have a good one. Okay, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Eric. Thanks. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. What a uh, great way to end uh, this show. Uh, you know, that's what a great conversation to have, continue to have. Again, if you're still here with us, uh, hope you enjoyed that discussion of Nynaeve and how that finished off with Art and Jonathan's comment and the comments uh, from my guest here talking about just the world we live in today and hopefully what we continue to see as a, as a, yeah, a trend across the world when it comes to movies and film that we're all represented in them. That'd be really nice. And let's keep doing that, please. Uh, and that, that being said, any final comments uh, before we end for this evening from the two of you? Uh, maybe we'll start with you, uh, Nakomi. Um, I don't have much to say, basically. I just, I'm looking forward to the show. I'm counting down, um, you know, just, you know, um, uh, to that point, um, I'm actually, uh, Anyway, I'll pro- I'll promote myself in my own thing, basically. But yeah, at the same yeah. time, yeah, um, go- I'm looking forward to the show. I-, I I can't wait for it for us to actually, you know, see see it um, come to life, basically. So, I'm excited. Yeah, that, absolutely. Uh, how about you, uh, Rhythm? Any final comments? Well, thank you so much for having me. I love watching the show, so being a part of the show was definitely a very a treat and. Um, yeah, thank, just thanks so much for having me. I love Nynaeve and I can't wait for the show. Um, it's going to be really fun to like watch the show as a reader and just see everyone else like react to it. I'm really excited. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, thank you both. I loved your comments. Uh, thank you for doing the, the, the hard work of getting ready for the show. Uh, and I don't mean hard work as in watching that, like, but it takes time and care to go and, and, and bring it to the show. It was very hard for me to watch Power Rangers. It was, so <laughs> <laughs> it was so that's, hard. Well, hopefully. I, I didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> hope, hopefully all of you will go back and check those out. I, I really enjoy this. Our next one, we're actually coming up. We're talking about Marcus Rutherford and Perrin. Lesbian Nerdy is going to be on that one uh, with Corey Lansdell is going to be on that one. We're going to talk about Perrin. That one's in a couple weeks. Remember to come back this Walt Wednesday. We're doing game night. Uh, thank you, everybody. I'm going to miss some names. Uh, David Green, Inca, Mash the Deck, Pokemon Phil, Nerd Grits, Carolina, uh, Scott, Francisco, Lesbian Nerdy, Lumen, Dusk, Village Mattress, Miss Sarah James, Aceyla, Aceyla, uh, and Dave Daniel Green for the tips. Uh, I can't believe I, <laughs> that, that, yeah, well, thank you all. I appreciate that. Again, uh, you're making me blush. And so good job on all of you. Uh, so uh, I think that's it from around here. Show back up on Wednesday. Like I said, we might have a little surprise on Sunday. And as always, thank you very much to my son, Taylor, whether it's remote or here in person for all that he does in the show and for my dear wife, who takes the calls. And uh, I love that when she tells me the stories of people that don't know that it's the innkeeper's wife taking the calls after the show. That's a lot of fun for me. So (laughs) uh, thank you all. Have a good Sunday afternoon and enjoy this one. Please like this video on the way out. Subscribe if you're not. We'd love to have you on our journey to the premiere. And as we say around here, good afternoon from the Dusty Wheel and smash the button. You went right to kill it. Look at you, you're all ready. You're just done.
I mean, this is like, uh, this is one really of the well. biggest um, And now I'm like, great, my turn. <laughs> and if you don't like that, um, you want to say, well, Robert Jordan could have made the two rivers all white. He could have, but he gotcha. didn't. So okay. Just complimented me so, on my dress, and as you can clearly see, I'm sad. I just need to call me as like something it. along the lines of a Shida Haran analog. For okay. It does make sense why it outlasted the breaking. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know, this is why I have saying. Therese in the show because she's gonna correct everything that. Hey, everybody! I'm wrong welcome about to the Dusty Will Show. What? Dream off challenge! Yay! Terrible, like baby face mounted on like a huge body. So like all <laughs> of a sudden, it's not just a like, traditional wow. fantasy, right? There, there are sci-fi and elements. And just a moment ago, kind of uh, Rafe tweeted something. So let me get my guests in here with me, he and probably I would say get, put in seventy, eighty percent of the work. I got to be over the shoulder and be like, no.